Moving forward with our character, we have the movement, rotation, and jumping. Now we are going to have the dash. And the dash is, as I already explained, is going to be like, imagine this is our character, and when we press the left shift, it is simply going to propel him, for example, up to here. So it's going to move him a little bit faster, these few units over here, so that we will be able to avoid the bullets from our enemies. And in order to do that, I'm simply going to right click here and I'm going to filter for left shift like this. And pay attention here, we have an event called left shift. Now, if I hover over it, it will say events for when the left shift key is pressed or released. So far, We've been going here inside of the project settings and then into action mappings and then we will put here or create our own action mappings and assign here the keys we want to be pressed to, to detect that action mapping. But if you also want to detect individual keys, for example, a left shift like we're doing here, you can simply filter it over here. So simply left shift or alt or whatever and then when you press that, it will be detected. So what are we going to do when we press the left shift key? Well, we are going to go inside of a branch, which is an if else statement, and we need to provide it a condition. Now we are going to dash, but we're only going to dash if we are moving. And if we can dash, so this is one of those conditions, can dash. Now, by the way, we are also going to select the can dash over here, you see, select it. And then here inside of the details, right here, make sure that you check this checkbox because initially when we run our game, we will be able to dash. So this is one of the conditions. Another condition is going to be, we're going to say here, get velocity. So in the search, I'm going to simply say get velocities. If I can spell correctly, finally I can. Here it is, this bottom one. So click on it. And basically the velocity of our game character or of the actor will not be equal to zero if we are moving. So if the game character is moving inside of the game, his velocity will not be equal to zero. And to test that, you can simply call print string. So you can print here a string, you can attach this over here, it will convert it into a string, and you can print that just to see what I am talking about. But yeah, when your game runs and your character is moving, velocity will not be equal to zero. So we're going to test it here. So drag a line from this return value an exclamation mark and equal sign because testing if it's not equal to will require will require you to type exclamation mark and not equal to because if you use double equal sign, it will test if something is equal to something exclamation mark and not equal sign will require you or it will prompt you to test if it's not equal to. And we want this one, not equal to exactly. So this is the one that we want. And we are going to plug this into an and boolean statement. So here and boolean, this is what we want, this bad boy over here. So we want to test if this boolean is true. And we want to test and if can dash is also true, but we also want to test here a third boolean. And let me just move this over here. And for the third one, we need to get this character movement, which is right here. So take the character movement, put it over here. And from the character movement, we want to get the movement mode. So here I'm going to say movement mode. And here it is, get the movement mode. And we want to compare the movement mode from our character movement. Let me just take this over here, just move it a little bit down so that we can have a little bit space and see what we are doing over here. So movement mode, we are going to compare it and I'm going to say if it's equal to the enum and now we have the movement mode enum or enumeration and we want to test if it's equal to walking, you see? And plug this in over here. So essentially what we are doing on these three conditions that we are testing is we are testing if our velocity is not equal to zero and if the character movement mode is equal to walking and if we can dash, so all three of these, all three of these need to be true for this condition to be true. And now I'm going to plug this in over here inside of the condition and only then we will be able to dash. Now, in order to dash, what we are going to do? Well, we need to launch the character. If that is true here, we're going to say launch character, which is going to, as I said, propel him, but we also need to take or get the launch velocity. Now, in order to get that, first of all, I'm going to get our own regular velocity. So I'm going to say get velocity, so velocity like this, and here it is at the bottom. 
Now I'm going to divide my velocity by a float. So here I'm going to say divide by float and I'm going to divide that by 0.5. So I'm going to divide it by half. I'm going to split the velocity in half because I don't want to use my full velocity because then it will propel the character really, really high or actually really, really, really far away. So we don't want to do that. So we're halving it with 0.5. And next I'm going to break this vector. So I'm going to say break vector because we're only going to propel our character on the Z axis. If I hover over, if I actually go over here in the viewport and if I select the mesh component, we are going to take and propel our character only on the Z axis, which is going to push him a little bit up. You see over here, because our location see on the Z, he is moving up, as you can see. So we are going to push him a little bit up and let's go back here in our event. So we have, when we call the break vector, we can take all individual axes, X, Y, and Z, and then plug them in back inside of another vector. And in order to do that, we need to call here make vector. Here it is. So we're creating a new vector now from the broken one. So we want to plug in the X here in the X, Y in the Y. But when it comes to Z, we want to move him a little bit upwards, as I already said. So I'm going to say here plus float like this, and I'm going to add to it 200. So I'm going to add 200 to our Z and then plug it back over here. And after that, simply we can plug this inside of our launch velocity, which is going to, if I hover over, you see set a pending launch velocity on the character. The velocity will be processed on the next character movement component tick. And it will be set to the falling state. It will back, basically, as I said, it will launch the character, which means it will propel him above a little bit. But the last thing that we need to do is because we need to set our can dash. We need to make sure that we are not able to dash 3000 times in a second. So the next part over here is to set can dash, here it is, to false. And if I close this now, and let me just take this over here and move it like this, because I want to put all of this inside of a inside of a comment so that we can have everything organized. So right click, create a comment, and I'm going to say here dash. And here it is for our dashing, so compile and save. So if I go back now and run the game, and I need to simply lower the volume just a bit more. So now when I'm moving, you see I'm moving regularly, but when I press shift, you see how he propelled a little bit, and now I cannot do that anymore because over here, can dash is set to false. And if I don't do that, if I break it and compile and save, because can dash initially, if you remember over here, is set to be equal to true, as you can see, we set it to be true, which means we will be able to dash every second. See, I'm dashing, 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 and I'm dashing, 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 and dashing, 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 and you get the point, I'm dashing, okay? <laughs> but no, seriously, you see, now I can move as many times as I want in order to dash. But the issue here is we don't want it like that. Instead, we need to set can dash now to be equal to false, but now we have another issue there. So now I can only dash once. I press shift to dash only once, and that is all. I, if I press the left shift again, I'm not able to dash. Now we need to fix this. In order to fix it, we do need to call our tick update over here, which is the event tick. This is called every frame in our game. Now we are going to use this tick for a couple of things. We are going to use it to slow down time. We are going to use it to count our level timer, but we are also going to use it for our dash. Now, since I'm not still going to cover the level time or the slowing down of the time and the level timer that will come later and make sure that you save everything. So compile and save and also you can go under file and save all levels or you can simply control shift S. I believe it's command shift S on, on Mac. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm simply going to cover here the dash timer. Later on, when we get to the point to create our slowdown timer, we will do that. So bear with me over here. What we need to do is we need to go inside of a sequence from our event tick, and we're going to have three sequences. So the first one is going to cover the slowing down of the time. The second one is going to cover the dash timer and the third one is going to cover the level timer. So here from the second one, as I said, because we're going to cover the dash timer over here, I'm going to go inside of a branch 
which is an if else statement, meaning we are going to have a true and a false based on the condition over here. And what is the condition that we want to test? We want to test if we can dash. So here I'm going to plug this in and if we can dash, based on that condition, it will be either true or false. And over here, when we dash, as you can see, when we dash at the end, when we launch or propel our character, we are going to set the can dash to be equal to false. So when we press the shift key once, the dash over here will be false, which means from here, we will start executing things. So what do we want to do inside of our false? Well, here, I want to set the dash timer. So set dash timer. And we want to set the dash timer by using, so get dash timer, let me just find it over here, get the dash timer, and we want to add to it, so we are going to say float, actually here, float plus float, and we want to add the dash timer and the delta seconds time over here. Now, what is the delta seconds time? Well, delta seconds, if I hover over, you see, it doesn't give us much explanation, but basically delta seconds, if you see here, the event tick is called every frame. So if we have 60 frames in a second, this tick event will be called 60 times in one second. The delta seconds is the time elapsed between each frame. So the small amount of time that we have between, for example, frame one and frame two, frame three and frame four, frame five and frame six, this is that time. It's a very small number and we use it to smooth things out like here if we are doing things inside of a tick. So now we are going to add to the dash timer the delta seconds and we're going to plug that inside of the dash timer which eventually will make it go above. Now what do we want to test over here or above what? Well again we're going to go inside of a branch so we are going to go inside of the branch and the test that we are going to perform is we're going to check if the dash timer, so get the dash timer, and we're going to check if the dash timer interval and click and get here the dash timer interval. Now the dash timer interval is going to be the variable that is going to control how many times can we, can we dash. So select the dash time interval or dash interval, excuse me, and we're going to set here 1.5 of a second. That means that every 1.5 of a second, we will be able to perform our dash. But in order to test that, we need to make sure that our float is greater or equal to like this. And we are testing if our dash timer is greater or equal to the dash interval. And over here, I'm going to plug this inside of the condition again. And based on this condition, it will either be true or false. But when it gets to the point that it is equal to true, we are going to set the dash time. So set the dash timer to zero again. And then here we're going to say can dash is now equal to true. So make sure that you check this checkbox over here, as you see, as opposed to what we did over here, because over here we make sure or made sure that it is not checked. So when it's not checked, it means that we set it to false. When it's checked like here, we set it to true. So essentially what we are doing here, when we dash, when can dash is equal to false, we are going to set the dash timer. We're going to increase its value by the delta seconds. As you see here, we are adding delta seconds to the dash timer and we are plugging that back to set the new value of the dash timer. Next, we're going again inside of a branch, which is a true false statement or condition. And we're testing if our dash timers value is greater or equal to the dash interval. So if it's greater or equal to the dash interval that we set over here to be equal to 1.5, which means every 1.5 of a second, we will be able to dash. So when that condition is true, we are going to set the dash timer to zero and make sure to set the can dash to be equal to false. Before I test this out, I'm going to select all of this here and right click. And here I'm going to say dash timer interval so that we actually are testing when can we dash again? And we're going to move this down, compile and save, control shift S to save all. And if I go back now and run the game, if I dash once, you see once, and then I can wait 1.5 of a second as you see already here, 
to dash again. And you can test that out on your own. The best way you can test it, because I'm not sure if you can see this propelling, you see how this is the normal movement. Pay attention to the text here. This bullet box is stand inside, blah, blah, blah. You see, no, when I move, this is the regular movement. But if I move and dash, pay attention now. Now I'm dashing, you see how fast he went? And if I dash again, now I dash again. And if I press it again millions of times, I cannot dash until the condition is fulfilled, the one that we just did over here. And you can see that and test it best on your own and see that feeling in the game that you have when you propel the character. So this is for our dashing. And until then, or until the next video, fire from I will see you guys then.